Hashtag I'm from Denver. We always try to bring in people who are all about Colorado and represent Colorado. I've known this guy for a minute, not a long time, but enough to know that he is all about Colorado, Larry. Josh Schmitz. I don't even know where to start with handsome boys. I don't even know where to start. Uh, all what I did know. Did you just call him? Well, he's a handsome man, but but he's <laughs> his uh, a company is called Handsome Boys. Yeah, handsome Boys Hospitality. Handsome Boys yeah. Hospitality. And so uh, here at Out the Box, is it's a vintage toy store. Maybe you've seen a few episodes. Uh, everything that people grew up with. You were Josh when you came in. You were blown away. But I sent you a picture because you have a, a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle themed pizza spot, adult only. I do. And I was like, oh, dude, he, I sent you that picture. And you're like, where's that at? And I was like, well, come on down for a podcast. Hook, line, and sinker you got. <laughs> now, what do you mean adults only? Is it like we allow kids? We got, no, we allow kids <laughs> up to 7 p.m. And then afterwards, we're, we're realistically, we're a bar. Oh, okay. Um, it just happens to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle themed. Oh, um, nice. So... Yeah, a lot of our reviews, like when the beginning we were 21 up always. I, okay. Oh, you did change it yeah, a little we, bit. Yeah, okay. we, we opened it 21 up and then looking at the reviews, people were like driving in from out of state and they were like, what the Oh my God, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. And but, they're standing there with their family yeah. wanting to come in. So yeah. you kind of accommodated them. And did that mean more business? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, you know. Better reviews. Better reviews, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, I mean, 90% of our business is 8 to 2 a.m. And so, right. you know, but opening for that lunch crowd and the families uh, definitely help us out a little bit. Nice. Nice. Tell Larry a little bit about it. Because when you walk in there, and, and we're going to show up some videos right now, but there's a whole mural uh, mm -hmm. that was done. Uh, every spot that you have, I want to talk about a few, a few of them, but uh, the murals were crazy in there, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. and so describe kind of the atmosphere. Yeah, um, my good friend Pulp um, is a super famous graffiti artist. So we hired him to come out and do the do the mural. Um, yeah, we've used him at right a country club we've used him a bunch of different places but when you go in it's massive murals larry and then there's video games downstairs yeah right? a little, yeah a little arcade downstairs and then a big bar and then we have like a mezzanine area that we have live music from and then the guy who makes the pizzas is it he's from new york or it's yeah, new york style pizza, yeah from right? new york matt shoemaker he's an amazing chef he we just got uh, promoted to our gm as well he's also the creator of uh, famous jay's pizza as well oh awesome. okay yeah, we're, yeah we're super honored to have him on our team yeah because they um at a certain point they had to shift um during COVID and they started because they always do bagels and yep. stuff like that. And then they pivoted and started making pizza. Yeah. So that's him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how's the pie? Is it good? Uh, it's, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, I'm biased, but I think oh, nice. the best. No, it's New really York. good. And, and we filmed him making it and, and we'll throw it out, but it was. So it's that thin crust. Yeah. Like, New York, oh, classic New York style. Hell yeah. But yeah. you talked about COVID and that was what was interesting about Josh. And, and, and how many guys, uh, partners do you was have? It, is it Rosenberg's? Boys? Rosenberg's. That's yeah, what it is. Exactly. How Thank many, you. how many partners are there in Handsome Boys? Uh, it's me and my business partner, Matt Haberman. And then our third partner is Brandon John, he's the CEO of uh, Wine Coop Financial, and he just basically handles all of our finances and keeps you need us the out of jail. numbers now, guy. Yeah, do you the have numbers to, guy. Do you have to be handsome to get a job there? No, I think oh. it's quite the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> quite the opposite. But I mean, you guys started uh, and really developed all these businesses during COVID, right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty crazy. We had one location called Bellwether um, at like Colorado and Colfax. So it was like a coffee and cocktail concept. And then when COVID hit. Um, I don't know how to say that. I'm, I'm not an entrepreneur. I, I honestly don't even know how to spell that word. Uh, I just have a real authority complex. So it's, it's, you know, so it's impossible for me to have a boss. And so uh, when COVID hit and somebody who I've never met is trying to tell me what to do, it was like, that didn't sit well with me. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we want to keep everybody safe, but I'm like, okay, we can't just tuck our tails. That's not in my nature. Mm -hmm. So what is on the other side of this mountain? What are the, you know, some opportunities that, you know, if, if, if we feel defeated, we're not going to see. And one of the things we realized was that, you know, in the hospitality industry, bars and restaurants were closing left and right, which leaves big vacancies. And then for the landowners, it's like, well, a lot of times they don't actually look at the bottom line. They'll look at their vacancy rates. And so we started hitting up developers and different things. And uh, we're walked into a bunch of really interesting second generation places that we got to bring life to. Yeah, what, let's, let's name a few of them because uh, what's the name? I, I, I just think t Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle theme, but what's the actual? It's Casey, uh, Casey Jones. Jones. Yep. And then uh, what are the other spots that you have? Because there was an Alice in Wonderland one yeah. and a themed one. and. Yeah, so we have uh, Slashers. Um, during COVID, we rebranded Bellwether into Slashers. Um, so that's on Colfax in Colorado. Uh, Hidden Gems Ice Cream. It's a like Wizard of Oz themed ice cream shop that plays trap music. With amazing ice cream, though. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, looks really. so good. Like, Because yeah. you guys are able to take the ice cream, the toppings, and then turn it into soft serve. Yeah, it's, you can create your own soft serve. Oh, basically. it's so mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, and then we did uh, Drunken Bakery. Um, it's like a macaron um, and like desserts delicacy. 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 Delicacy place. I couldn't. I was. I was. I couldn't say specificity. Specificity the other day. Yeah. I still don't think I'm saying it right. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> yeah. I, I, there was something when we were in Vegas, and I couldn't get that word. Yeah, either. it's early. I haven't had my coffee. Yeah, yet. yeah. Right. Um, and then we have um, Spirits Halloween is our Halloween pop up bar. 
We have Naughty Lists, our Christmas pop up bar. Uh, actually, grand opening is that. It, what that do you mean when you say pop up? Like, it's it, it, you have one location, you just change it based on the theme. Okay. Uh, yeah. So last year it was on Larimer Square. Um, Spirits Halloween is just open. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, yeah. That, that's a great yeah, brand. It's, it's the same logo. It's just we, in this headlines we put like cocktail shakers. Right. Um, spirits versus yeah. spirits. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just a Halloween pop-up bar for a month and then we flip it into naughty list and that's our Christmas pop-up and then, and where, so where is this at? Uh, it's at Tony P's, uh, okay. 32nd Zuni. And then so what, is that, is that everything? I no, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> what else is there? Like, uh, uh, but wait, there's more. Yes. <laughs> Slashers, hidden gems, drunken bakery, spirits, naughty list, um, disco pig. We have, we just got voted, uh, Denver's best dance club. That's on Larimer square. And then we have Rhino Country Club. That is like our nine hole pup pup party bar. And then we're getting ready. Is to that open. adult only? Yes, that okay. is 21 up. You get people mad about that? Is uh, that no, 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 not okay. as much. Not okay. as much. <laughs> Do you get to uh, try to, you know, put your ball in the clown hole? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a whole thing. Ten, $10 <laughs> lifetime membership, too. You can really? get it for free for 10 bucks. Yeah. That's awesome. And where's that at? Uh, that's at like 38th and um, Brighton. Okay. We're the closest bar to Mission Ballroom. So if okay. you want to take a show, definitely check us out. Yeah. So, so you must be busy all the time just trying to keep the, all these things going. And you probably have 10 other ideas for the next one. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, we have Casey Jones, and we're getting ready to open ED. Then as well on 14th and Market. Well, we want to collab on something. <laughs> Count us in. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> well, that's why I wanted you in here because I, I we saw each other at, at the Rare Steak Fest, mm-hmm. but uh, we've been we've been talking off and on. And I went to the Casey Jones, but it's like you really are. Is w- everywhere in Colorado and everywhere in Denver that it's like your name is going to be and Handsome Boys is going to be just synonymous if it's not already with just the Mile High City. I mean, I, ho- I hope so. Um, you know, I think that this town uh, has a whole unique culture and, and creativity to itself and I don't think that we need, you know, big groups from Chicago or LA coming in here and trying to tell us what, you know, is cool. I think yeah. that we have that in, inside our own people. Absolutely. And I think that there are, um, is a need for places like this because that's where everybody wants to go. These kind of like pop-up viral, you know, it's and unique then, right mm-hmm. unique and you want it to be good and if you if it's good too then it's just a winner well i think too you know covid got us really used to having lunch beers at our house and mm-hmm. got us used to eating in and all that stuff so now it's like you know what are you giving your customer a reason to actually get out of their house you know um because yeah. they could stay home and get anything they want delivered right yeah. and so i think it's not just your product it's also the experience that you're giving them and a lot of people either put too much into the experience and then the product sucks or they put you know everything on the product and the experience is lame so yeah. we try to kind of combine both those things that's smart so you are busy do you sleep no um, <laughs> I don't, yeah i, I want to yeah, as we're talking about any like of my habits and stuff, I want to put a disclaimer out there. This is not my advice. I'm just going to tell you how I'm wired. Um, I'm diagnosed hypomanic. So hypomanic is basically uh, manic bipolar, but without the bipolar, like without the, sorry, manic depressive. But okay. so I'm basically, I have a manic swings and then my depressive state is normal energy. So I only sleep maybe three, four hours a night. Oh my, oh my God. I just met my, uh, uh, like, yeah, that's exactly me, dude, because yep. I like and, uh, it, doing morning radio. I mm-hmm. got used to that schedule mm-hmm. and then COVID came and my schedule is all over the place. And now that I'm with, I'm from Denver, our schedule's all over the place. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I, it's weird how you can still operate with so little sleep. I've done like, uh, things on social media, like how much sleep does everybody get? And it, there's Most so many sleep. people yeah, that are getting So that are much. you constantly then on the grind? Like, let's say you're, just, you're up 21 hours a day. It sounds like 20 hours a day. Are you working pretty much that whole time? Cause yeah. I can't imagine you have all these businesses. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about the, the two female managers because, uh, those are the ones that I met at the, uh, the ice cream spot. Mm-hmm. And then the, uh, what's the upside down world bakery, uh, ba- uh drunk yeah, bakery, bakery. drunken bakery. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they do, they had nothing but great things to say about you and you empowered them as females and they couldn't say enough about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I think, I mean, like I said, there's, there's so much good talent here and it's interesting. Um, a lot of people are like, Oh, there's a, you know, there's a big, like you, it's hard to find workers. It's hard to find workers. Like there's a staffing shortage. We've never experienced that in any of our places. I think it's not very hard if you just treat your employees right. Yeah. For sure. If you pay people a livable wage, they'll right. stay. Yeah, exactly. Right. And have a fun environment yeah. like you have. For so sure. what do you think about the box when you came in here? Oh, I love this place. I literally was texting my brothers. I'm like, dude, you got to come check this out. Yeah. 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 So we brought up some Ninja Turtles. I, and now are you just, uh, what made you do the Casey Jones Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle theme? Was that just because you love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or? Yeah. So with all the different concepts, me and Matt kind of have an untraditional way of doing it. We a lot of times just light a fire and have a have a box in there, a bottle of whiskey, and yeah. just start going around. And so during COVID, um, it was almost like starting with the end in mind. So a lot of places, you know, they would go out of business or whatever, and so they would call us and we'd come look at it. 
I'm like, okay, I like the location. What would we do here? Versus like, oh, we have this idea. Let's put it here. For sure. And so uh, Casey Jones was an existing Giordano's that went under. So it was already built for pizza. And then in talking to the owners and just knowing that neighborhood, um, you know, South Broadway does not like chains. Um, so to put a chain restaurant there, I think was yeah. kind of ill-advised. And also on South Broadway, you know, no one wants to wait an hour to get a pizza. You right. know, it's, it's a more fast paced environment. So we're like, okay, the existing, you know, oven can work for pizza. It's really nice. Um, you know, what would, what would that look like? Okay. Pizza joint. That's not enough. You know, you have pie hole right there. You have atomic cowboy right there. Okay. You know, what kind of pizza, New York pizza. Okay. You know, who makes the best New York pizza in town? What's he make? Can we match that? You know, what, what would he leave to come with us? Okay. Nailed that. Okay. You know, now what's the experience? You know, I, I'm a big kind of anti-hero guy. So if we have New York pizza, it's like that nat- naturally lends itself to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. So why not? You're all, but anti-hero. You're all, yeah. And we saw a rat in the corner. And yeah. We thought, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but um, that's great. And I love being part of brainstorming sessions, stuff like that. Just a mm-hmm. creative vibe. And yeah, that's the best. And then you guys can really hammer out some good creative is that the process for all the spots? Like um, more or less. A lot of times, you know, like Rhino Country Club, um, we came across the location and it had a huge parking lot. Uh, you know, obviously we we actually built the mini or the min, the nine hole putt ourselves. Um, so it kind of has that like backyard, like this is this is fun, it's playable, but it's like not. It's, it's right. the, ball, the ball kind of goes by the hole and then it goes yeah, completely it's, it's off definitely the not side. urban yeah. putt. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. So, but it's it's a dive bar. It's a putt putt dive bar. Yeah, um, and right. then, you know, it's it's somewhere where I can lose you know seven or eight hours inside of there. It just feels like you know your cool neighbor's living room. Yeah, what what sure. spot do you love going to? Like, if you it doesn't sound like you have much time, but if there's a spot you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go here today. Yeah, I think it it, it fluctuates. Um, you know. Like kind of my brain, whatever the newest one is, is where I spend the most time and make sure that the culture and stuff is, there is correct. Um, you know, the pop-ups are awesome. I, I love kind of the energy. And I, I, I like that we put ourselves in a different group of category when we do the pop-ups. Like, for instance, in um, October, you had like this Beetlejuice one and like, a, you know, a couple other like pop-up bars. But a lot of them are like a ticketed experience. So like, I'm sure you guys see on Facebook, it's like, oh, join like the, you know, Little sure. Mermaid experience. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, you pay 60 bucks for a ticket and then you have you can only be there for 90 minutes. Yeah. And you, it's like two drinks. It's like, that's, what am I paying for really? You know, so we don't, we don't charge a cover at any of our places. There's no timeline. There's no drink minimums. It's just like. Just come Sounds like everyone loved you except for the people that couldn't bring their kids into yeah. Casey Jones. Yeah, and right. then you flip that around yeah. and everything's good. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Um, well, yeah, so, go ahead. No, no, no. So like, um, is, cause you know, there's a lot of people that they're like, oh, don't open a restaurant. It's just crazy. And you're like, I'm going to open 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I think, I think that's the thing, you know, in the, in the mindset, you know, it's like when everyone really was like devastated by COVID and I'm not saying that COVID wasn't devastating, but I think that the way that you look at life, it will create opportunities or it'll create disadvantages where you're sure. on, you know, where your own head space is. We all thought about opening a toilet paper store. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Hand sure. sanitizer. All <laughs> yeah, that yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. And then you're all that market's taken. Damn yeah. it. Dang it. Uh-huh. Well, I, I'm excited, man. Cause I, I think one of the biggest things and why I, want, I, I think it's important to network with people without a, a selfish reason, right? Mm-hmm. Like I would never want to come up to you and be like, Hey, I'm going to throw your stuff on nine from never. I was like, no, we need to, talk about all the locations and what handsome boys is all about Mm -hmm. and then figure out how I'm from Denver can contribute to what you're doing. Because what I find interesting is like, especially when you do these pop-up bars, how do you get the word of mouth out there? Because it's not like you have an established social media following when you're mm-hmm. doing a spirits and you're doing these thematic places. Mm-hmm. How do people find that? Or, or, or do you even market? Do you feel like you need to market on the, on? Yeah. I mean, obviously we've never done any paid advertising outside of like maybe promoted Instagram posts, but we've never like, we've never paid for an award or paid for a, a page in Westward or, you know, done any of that kind of stuff. We don't have a PR person that we pay. Uh, we just, try to do dope shit. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then just naturally just organically builds. Yeah. And I think not taking yourself too seriously either. You know, like if you look at like any of our um, Instagram pages or social media pages, it's like, we make fun of ourselves. We make fun of our staff. We make, you know, we make fun of our It's customers. not like these contrived social media. Yeah. That, like, yeah. like for instance, we had a, a review at the ice cream shop and it was like, you know, cause we blast the music. There's crazy colors everywhere. And it was like, you know, if you want to know what it's like to eat ice cream with the insane clown posse, this is your place. <laughs> and then it was like one star. And so we took that and put on a t-shirt and that was our merch for the, for the ice cream <laughs> shop. You know? That's um, awesome. Yeah. It's just not taking ourselves too seriously and you can't, and also understand you can't please everybody. So you yeah. know, as long as you're doing things that you love, um, I think that that's kind of takes care of itself. Yeah. I'm pretty sure ice cream and pizza please everybody. Yeah. Well, they should. They should. <laughs> well, you were at Rare. Do you, are you involved with a bunch of events as well? Like, cause you're actually mixing. That was the thing I saw about Rare. It wasn't like you were serving pizza from Casey Jones or so. you literally had a, a DJ there. And I don't know if you're, are you a DJ yourself? 
Uh, everyone in Denver is a DJ. Everyone's a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is that when you go to these events and you're like, hey, I'm, I'll, I'll do the music? Or how do you get involved with these events that happen in Colorado with... And, well, and I, I mean, I'm, I was born and raised here, right? So, um, it's hashtag I'm from Denver. Yeah. Hashtag more natives. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, so, um, Jeff and Shalisa that throw all of those, um, from dining out. Uh, my dad was actually Shalisa's, uh, youth pastor when she was in high school. I mean, wow. so like I've, I've known, known them for a long time. And then when Jeff was doing the festivals kicking up, I helped with a lot of like the event builds and the marketing around that. Yeah. Top taco rare, mm-hmm. all those things. Yep, okay. Yep. And then, um, when we have handsome boys, you know, same thing. I look at that event and I go, okay. Top Taco, um, you know, it's a lot going to be a lot of Mexican um, like music and Lucha Libre and stuff. You know, is it worth it for us to bring in whether it's an ice cream shop or, you know, part, you know, but or is it easier for us to just partner with like Mile High Spirits, another great local company and bring our own music and like throw our own party within the party within the party. Right. Yeah. yeah, I love the way you dissect things like you, right. you, you're totally like, well, if we're in New York, what's going to be there? I'm an anti hero. <laughs> yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Casey Jones. Yeah. Like, I love that you think of that like that. Yeah, I think I mean, I think that the school system fails us really badly in teaching us like memorization and that kind of stuff and not enough critical thinking or problem solving. I, agree. I think that if everybody was like 2% more self aware and became like a 2% better problem solver, it would solve like in a massive amount of issues. Right. As a business owner and just entrepreneur, I, I'm curious, how do you manage all of that? Like, is it just hiring the right managers mm-hmm. or I, or maybe it's because you sleep three hours a night, but it, do you feel like you, you have to control the situation and all those, or how do you maintain that? Yeah. Um, there's a couple of different things. So a with COVID again, um, you have a bunch like, the, the restaurant and bar industry, people are super loyal, right? So if you're like, if you're a busser, then you're a server, then you're a bartender, then you're a manager. Like a lot of people, don't, you know, they like the boss or they don't like the boss, but they don't leave. So what we found in, in COVID was all of the GMs are actually the ones that run it, right? The owners might have a, a small piece in it, but your GMs are really kind of the, the captain of your ship, mm-hmm. which means they also handle a lot of finances. So when the PPP loans became available, it was a lot of the GMs that were putting their work together, figuring out how much money they could get and then actually seeing that check and that's supposed to be for the employees and then giving it to the owners and then never seeing a cent. Wow. So you almost had a mass exodus of like really, really, we call them operators or of amazing operators. So during COVID, I was like, oh. just bitter almost. Well, yeah. And they're like, you know, like, yeah, screw you. Yeah. Right. So, so during COVID, I'm like, wait a minute, this is almost like, like drafting an NFL team. If everyone was a free agent, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm oh, like, I'm like, you're like killer. playing Madden. You're killer. You're <laughs> I don't killer. know. Like, Absolutely. You got the best of the best. Yeah. And, and they like, all needed a place. Yeah. And they're, they're good. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's all of us have had a bad boss or a boss that micromanages you. That's like, imagine like, even okay, if you're a DJ and they hire you because they like your music and then they're all of a sudden they're like, oh, but you need to play these songs. It's like, well, why did you hire me if I can't be myself? Yeah. Exactly. Um, with our GMs, like we try to not do that. Like, here's your strong suits. Like, here's where your weaknesses are. We'll put that around you. And like, we're here for support. We're sure we're, you let people do them. And yeah. then that's, that's why you hired them. And then they shine, you shine. Mm-hmm. It all works. Exactly. And it, you want to go to work with somewhere you're, where you're proud of, you know? So that's yeah. the GM. It's like, you want to hire people that you would like to get a beer with. You want to hire people you can trust. Well, I'd like to get a beer with you and the smoke sesh and come up with the next pop-up. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. What is next? Don't tell him. Yeah. It's our thing. Oh, you, it's, it's once you guys get together, you got, you just I already got 10 ideas. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> grand, grand opening for uh, Naughty List is Friday. And then uh, we're working around the clock at Eden. It's going to be almost like if my neighbor Felix and uh, forget me not had a baby in South Miami. So like a really sexy, um, you know, uh, tapas restaurant right down, right downtown on 14th and Lamar. He said tapas Wiggins, not topless. Oh, yeah. dang it. I was like, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I'm there for the yeah. grand opening yeah. and never leaving. Grand opening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's very cool to see everything that you're doing. I, I wish you would get more sleep, uh, <laughs> yes. but, but it, it's, do you hear that from all the, the great minds and the people who've done great things? They, they really don't sleep. Right. <laughs> it, sucks. it sucks because like, sometimes you really like wish you could sleep mm-hmm. and like you get used to like, um, almost you get used to it. Yeah. It kind of sucks. I, well, just, I feel bad for my girl. Cause I, you know, when I wake up, I'm like, well, I can either sit in here and read and journal or watch TV and right. mess up the rest of her sleep or right. I can go to the couch and, you know, so exactly. she, you know, loadable, like, yeah. gets well, a snack. We're <laughs> sponsored by hip shots and they actually have a, a, a natural, uh, like drink that energy. will help you go to sleep. Well, okay. it's energy yeah, they, and there's they, they, sleep. They, so maybe we can get you some of those. Right. <laughs> he is a, a very natural, uh, tasting, uh, energy shot and a sleep shot and the sleep shot totally works. It doesn't leave you groggy and they're available at circle K. There's okay. the, pl- there's the plug of the show right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so should people follow you? I mean, I don't even know how that works. Uh, yeah, if you, yeah, if you yeah. want to follow me personally, my uh, handle is just at Joshua underscore Schmitz. Uh, I only follow Applebee's though, so don't don't really, really, <laughs> yeah. really. Yeah, that's hilarious. Why? What was the reasoning? Um, 
Well, Applebee's used to do uh, dollar drinks, but you, they only advertise on their Instagram. So I was following all these people <laughs> and I was always missing the dollar drinks. So I unfollowed everybody and I'd only follow Applebee's now. So I never missed a deal. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, dude, you're amazing. Oh, dude, that's well, hilarious. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if following you like, one. Yeah. If you, if you look at your, if you look at your screen time and how much stuff is like, how do I, how do I phrase this and not have it sound douchey? Um, you're either almost like a, you're a creator or you're like a customer. So it's like yeah. you spend it, you know, you spend a lot of time. Are you consuming like what other people are doing or are you spending that time creating? And I think a lot of, a lot of times if you're just like trying to keep up with the Jones or, okay, what's this person doing or what's this person doing? It's like, okay, yeah, I got to learn this dance now. Yeah. Well, I guess we're all eating this. Yeah. So. It's just like, you know, or you can just spend that exact same time creating in the same way with the business. Right. That's one of the things I love about Colorado specifically is, you know, in, in contrast to like LA or New York, it's almost like, you know, if you guys are, you know, a uh, podcast host and then like you have a friend that gets a podcast and it's bigger, a lot of those people are like, well, fuck that guy. Or, you know, like, you know, he's taking our market share yeah. or whatever. You got to bring everybody Never. up. But yeah, but Denver, yeah. Denver is like, you know, there's, there, there's no like diameter on the pie. So no matter how your, you know, big your piece gets, it doesn't mean that mine's any less, you know what I right. mean? Yeah. I think that's a, just a, a way better, like, you know, creative. But I also think that's you, how, how you are as a person and individual. I think some people in Colorado are that way, not everyone, but I do agree that yeah. as far as businesses, but I think you're kind of, your, your character is like that, right? Like anytime I've seen you, you've never shied away from, Hey, come on, we're rare. Come over here and get on the mic. Yeah. And, and and you've always just been super nice humble. and humble. Yeah. yeah 100%. Well, I mean, you know, I'm gonna come from nothing. And so I think that, you know, that lends myself to having this a little bit. Maybe of you should be the humble boys. Yeah. The hum- <laughs> <laughs> My business partner would actually love if we changed the name. <laughs> really? He's all, you've set expectations too high. Yeah. Yeah. Every, Every woman t- that meets he's me. Like, he's like, that's disappointing. Like, they're not going to know we're liars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will screw that. You're handsome. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, the same way, you know, it's like, there's two ways to build the tallest building. You either build the tallest building or you knock everything else around you down. <laughs> and I, I, I just can't drive with the ladder of that. You know yeah. what I mean? If, right. you're, if you're someone that's always knocking other people down, it's like, you're not actually getting any taller with that attitude. No, so. for sure. Nobody likes that vibe. Yeah. No. Well, anything that you do, man, I'm from Denver. I want, I wanted you on here to kind of, cause this is our, our second episode. And I think that you're the epitome really of, of Colorado and, and the, even that mindset that you have of everyone comes together. So anything that we can do that I'm from Denver could do, even if it's buying you a Ninja Turtle, like, uh-huh. I'm, <laughs> uh-huh. sure. well, where's it? Where's a bottle of yellow room? Let's take oh, a shot. Yeah, I got we, you. We, we got, got some. It. We actually have some here. Yeah. Okay. We don't leave home without it. <laughs> um, yeah. And we'd love to, like maybe uh, bring the podcast down to one of the restaurants and hang yeah. out or one of the pop-up bars. Having, I, I would love, and Larry brought this up too, like an I Am From Denver, you do these pop-up parties, it'd be cool to have an I Am From Denver party at, at one of any of places. those spots. Yeah, I, I would love yeah. it. I would love it. That'd be a blast. Yeah, any, anything that we can do to, to work together, I'm, you know, you're only um, as big as your team. You know, plus we can do something with these guys because of these pop up toys oh, okay. so we can display these around the bar and yeah. i don't know <laughs> what, what is this one called I'm always, like, my, I, pet, yeah. my pet monster my pet monster yeah right? and it folds the eyebrows right, right. yeah for sure yeah. Mm-hmm. they're it, super popular everybody the, they just their eyes go right to those yeah the biggest thing about uh, doing the podcast here because larry and i were talking all right let's do a night from denver podcast but the problem is everyone has a podcast it's not against it yep. this is everyone has a podcast and i was like it's like the the new version of i'm in a band or yeah, i'm a rapper yeah mm-hmm. or i'm a dj yeah. you know everyone's mm-hmm. a dj so i was like we need to have an atmosphere that when people walk in here they're instantly transported to a different mindset mm-hmm. right and i feel like that's how exactly what happens when you come out of the box like even when larry and i come in here after coming here a few times you're We're like still oh shopping yeah yeah right. is that how you felt when you came in yeah here? I'm, I'm, there's a couple things i got my eye on so I'm that's like, the worst I'm like, I'm like as long as no one's coming in behind me i'm like, right <laughs> no that's that is the worst because every time you come in here there's something different and then if you don't get it because sometimes some time, you come back and then it's, it's gone, gone yeah and you're you're like no right. plus I've made a deal with these guys to get my own case because I have like my own like box toys. Uh, my husband, he has like boxes and boxes of unopened brand new Star Trek toys from years and years ago. And I was like, I'm taking some of those for my case. And he's all, why? I was like, because they're just in a box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so look for seven of nine coming soon. Yeah. No, it looks, it looks <laughs> incredible here. I love this place. Well, yeah. Josh, thank you for coming on, man. It was cool to have you on as our second guest. Yeah. And honestly, it really is our, our, our second episode. So there wasn't anyone that I wanted on with Larry and I to talk about everything that you're doing because you're literally north, south, east, and west mm-hmm. in Denver. Uh, different themes, different vibes. I love the Casey Jones pizza. And, I, and to Larry's point, we need to figure out and uh, a hashtag I'm from Denver party and, and come party with you. You know and what then, we could do is we could get a bus and go to all the locations. 
Like do a little tour. Like a handsome boys right. bus. Tour. Yeah. yeah. You can grade yeah. them all like at Hooters. Make sure your tan's correct. For you know, sure. Your body fat's good. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure there's... There you go. Uh-huh. Thanks, Josh. We appreciate you, yeah, man. No worries, guys. Thanks that for having fun. me. Appreciate it. Hey, is there a website that has all of your stuff? Yeah, it's it's literally handsomeboys.com. Handsomeboys.com. Uh-oh, people are going to be scared right. to enter that yeah, URL. 18 or older. Yeah. 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 <laughs> handsomeboys.com is our website. Oh, cool.